already done 90 miles and 20,000 feet of climbing. How are the legs feeling? Tired. How are the brains feeling? I'm tired. Satisfaction. Good. And like we've always known there's this descent and in a couple reports it said it was sort of gnarly but now that I've seen what we've already done that was like fairly gnarly and it wasn't even dubbed gnarly by other people I'm like oh then this could be sort of sketchy especially at night so crazy when we left you, it was like yeah. there was that <laughs> one cloud. Oh, it was, it was yeah. one cloud. It I, was like hot. I was like, oh, yeah. it's pretty hot. Well, <laughs> thank God you seen was looking ahead. He was like, let's get some like yeah. rain gear or yeah. something. <laughs> you know, it's right. like you don't know if you're gonna finish. You don't know what's mm -hmm. gonna happen. Yeah, any decision made on, in the name of safety is is good. Fine by me. Beaverton! You see that? Beaverton, Oregon. Nice. Wow. Oh, there's the... Uh, this ain't the outhouse. It's the kitchen. You don't want to mix those two things up. We are in Death Valley, and it is the night before our big adventure, lowest to highest. Lowest to highest travels from the lowest point in the U.S., negative 282 feet at Badwater Basin, to the highest point in the U.S., the summit of Mount Whitney. So we're going to use this as our midway three-hour nap spot. I think it's going to probably be the wee hours of the morning and uh, traveling, you know, over 100 kilometers through rough terrain and... I think it'll give us something to like look forward to as like the halfway point and kind of like that carrot to get to. <laughs> See, <laughs> I can... been a process and planning and a long time coming to get here. Months of preparation, so I'm I'm feeling great. Vest before the shoes, you like that? We are setting out to establish a fastest known time for the route. The current fastest time overall is basically just over two days, about two days and five hours. We are shooting for two days flat. Death Valley would be a little different than this. <laughs> We're gonna find that connection that makes us feel so good to each other, to our bodies, to the land. Preparation run for lowest to highest. I mean, 40 miles with 10,000 feet of climbing. And not only connecting and sharing this, this immense thing, sort of a celebration of our, our decade of, of friendship, but also with these other people who are gonna be part of the experience. We have two amazing crew members who are going to be out there supporting us, so I'm excited to share it with them as well. It feels like a lot of things coming together at you know nearly the 10 year anniversary of Wise Wolf Pack. This passion project business that Yasin and I have both literally poured our heart and souls into over a decade. Once we became running buddies and whatnot and kind of done some adventures together, Willie came up with this idea to start this business. Wise Wolf Pack started with this idea of combining personal training and coaching with corporate wellness, kids' trail running camp, and an after school program. Got the feeling in your body. Right the founding philosophy, so to speak, of 
Wise Wolf Pack is that personal transformation is possible. So many different parts of our philosophy are right in between here. Your inner dialogue, your self-talk. Here we go. Woo. Today is our Run TRG workout. All four people in recovery from substance addiction. In Yassine's life, he went through great transformation and overcame great challenges. I did as well. It instilled in each of us this belief that it is possible to change for the better, especially if you're struggling. I was telling a friend who was in town about our upcoming adventure, and she was just like, that sounds horrible. This maybe seems a little extreme to go through such adversity under our own decision making, but adversity makes other parts of life sweeter. Yeah, dude. In five, four, three, two, one, and we are off. Yeah. Woo! to get this party started after so much planning. We're doing it. We're at basically about sea level right now. We have a 10,000 foot climb up right ahead of us. Yeah. That's where we came from, somewhere way over there. Wow. Pretty expansive park here. Sunday church. Beautiful views at the top of the Sierra. We'll be there in a blink of an eye. Here we are, about 4,500 feet above sea level. Moving our way up, and then over. We are 8,000 feet above sea level. We are definitely struggling right now. Um, way, way slower than we thought it was gonna be. I, you know, often equate it to going to church. You don't go to church for fun. We weren't even planning to refill at the Hanapaw Spring. And we did. <sighs> ran out of the calories, ran out of water. People do those things for that really deep, deep sense of connection to something greater than them. It gives you bliss moments of can't even believe you're seeing what you're seeing where you are and then there'll be moments of just questioning why you're doing it wishing you weren't doing it <laughs> you want to feel it all by us doing these things we experience that deep sense of connection oh a trail a trail look at that yeah what a concept i'm blown away how difficult that 20 miles was my goodness you know, these quite low points will happen. <laughs> Maybe I was just hoping it wouldn't have happened so soon. Well, daunting to think about all that we got ahead, but hey, what else are we gonna do? Just gotta keep cruising, drink some Coke, eat some chips. Yeah, that's cool. Right. According to the track, it looks like it heads down that ridge over there. Yeah. I think the good thing, of course, is to think back on all those experiences, all the things we've done, tough times we've, we've pushed through. Yeah, I know that when, when it gets hard, those will be the things to remember and realize that, yeah, we've been here before. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm not very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Sixth grade, my mother had the opportunity to move us to rural Pennsylvania. 
It was a very much a culture shock. For me, it was the first time I really experienced racism. <laughs> Death Valley National Park is brutal in so many ways. The climbing was my original passion. I had started climbing without ropes, climbing alone without ropes. Some of the neighborhood kids were a little bit older and they were like starting to chew tobacco and smoke cigarettes and I kind of fell in with them. And it was just a matter of time before I took my first drink. I had struggled with anxiety and depression before that time. Those moments soloing, that was sort of the most powerful antidote to my depression. Just looking at it again. It's like 68 miles. Do you ever fall asleep when you're walking? <laughs> you should try it sometime. I drank and I felt like I don't have so much anxiety now. I feel loose, I feel good, I feel connected to people. Senior year of college, we were up in Summit County off I-70 at Officer's Gulch. My leg just sort of slid out from under me and I fell face first down to the ice. I had a lot of great times when I drank, but I also created a lot of wreckage along the way. As soon as I was sort of airborne, blacked out in the air before I ever even hit anything. I had no shoes on my feet, I had no money. It was the lowest point in my life. That sort of thing is a drug. Finding that sort of flow state where you're not dealing with mind chatter, where you're just acting sort of on intuition. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. That's what I used to always say. And I just didn't give a damn about anybody. I had found this antidote to my depression and anxiety and I had to stop using it. I was hopeless and like reckless. I started to accept that my time was up and that I was moving now on to a new chapter. It was pretty hot, mostly completely blue skies. There was literally one little area of clouds on the far horizon. And I give you scene credit because he was like, I, I checked some forecasts and said there was a chance of rain. We should bring our jackets. As we were moving down the road, we were definitely realized something's rolling in. We realized that we're also climbing up into higher altitude, and that's pretty much the last place you want to be going into a storm. As slow as we're moving, too. Yeah. That wind is gonna just cut right through us. This oh, is the sketchy part. Gotcha. Cause look, like, look at this terrain. Yeah. With that storm rolling in, yeah. I mean, we were like. I was just like, uh-oh. Yeah, we were like, does Willie even have pants? Yeah. <laughs> no, he didn't. Turns out he didn't. It's about to get bad. Yeah. I thought it was gonna start like dumping rain. The descent will be in the dark because we can't get there in an hour and a half. It's about nine miles away. So if we did that and like started down and got sketched out, then it would be a sort of a shit show to come back. You know, it's like there were sort of three factors. Two of them we knew were going to be factors previously. Sleep deprivation and gnarly terrain. But it's like then, you know, you, you add another factor on there and now it's like just you, that risk starts going up. After really just talking it out, I think we all kind of came to this realization that the best, safest thing to do is to, to not go through that section. Um. Well, so then I would say we freaking go to Lone Pine, get a hotel, have a big dinner, and get up early and go climb Whitney. Stopping my watch, that's the final decision. And the tracking. What if something happened to you seen? What if something happened to me? Like, mm -hmm. it would affect this beautiful mm -hmm. thing that we've created together. 
Of course there's going to be that little itch in the back of your brain of, oh man, I wish we had somehow could have finished it, but we can look back over these past few days and the amazing points are so numerous. I'm proud of us. I think that's a good call. Good job, you guys. And I'm proud of us for making it this far. I want to be doing this stuff for my whole life. I want to be exploring and moving and sharing experiences with people as long as I can. That alone is a reason to maybe take a little less risk and be able to keep giving to others. Things are gonna come up unexpectedly and you have to be able to roll with the punches and that's part of why we like to do these. It's like, let's go challenge ourselves. Let's see what happens. Will we finish or will we not? Like, who knows? All right, you folks, start your engines. We're heading out. Yeah, you look good. Good. I had some very low points in my life where it was too overwhelming and I thought, I can't get out of this hole. And I think it's real easy for people to think, oh, you just switched one addiction for another, but I don't think it's that easy. I was feeling better. I was feeling like I wanted to live. And I was excited to wake up every morning. Like personally, I mean, I struggle all the time. I struggle with depression. I struggle in my relationships sometimes. Yeah, I got tons to figure out. I will have tons more adventures with the scene and we'll do wonderful, exciting things. But yeah, personally, I think my growth to uh, even higher places in other parts of my life. Experiencing these types of endurance events shows us when it seems like you cannot go on, you can. And you can get to the high. In those activities, we connect. And that connection is something that we deeply yearn for. Any shared thing, any connection, battles this greater, deep sense of, of disconnection. Just because you go from a low place to a high place doesn't mean you're up there forever. Maybe you go back down into a valley a little bit and then you hit the next peak. Those are the times when you practice your mental toughness. You practice your ability to be resilient. And then when other parts of life come up and you throw the true challenges at you, you're a little more able to, to work with it. It's not about everyone being sober, or being a certain thing or whatever, it just means you can change your life.